Hi, everyone. Welcome back to theCUBE's coverage of Commerce Tools Elevate here in Miami, Florida. I'm your host, Rebecca Knight, and here with Shelly Kramer. She's our my co-host and our and our analyst today. Shelly, we talk about so much here on theCUBE, AI, ML, future of work, but rarely do we talk about beauty. <laughs> <laughs> and I have been so looking forward to this conversation <laughs> because beauty is my game. It is, it is. Uh, I all, mean, all of our game, exactly. I want to welcome Jeff Hamm. He is the Vice President of Digital Experience and Operations at Hello. Ulta Beauty. Thank you so much for coming Thanks on for the show. Me. Appreciate it. And you look beautiful. Oh, well, thank you. I think everybody does, right? Everybody <laughs> does beauty in their own way. Exactly. So you are all about bringing technology to mm -hmm. the customer experience and helping them uh, learn about new products, uh, find out what's best for them, find out if they have any rewards, streamline the process. Sure. How do you describe this, this holistic customer experience? Yeah, I think we want to approach beauty and be all things beauty all in their world, but that means when um, meet them where they're at, right? And I say that because we know that the journey for beauty is not linear. It spans uh, both digital and physical. So we want to make sure that, you know, the experiences that we create, whether they're out of the store or in the store, are complemented by both things. So how do we blend the physical and digital? And so, you know, I say that and, you know, we, and we create these holistic experiences by, you know, leveraging the data that our customers are giving us, right? Um, we have 43 million uh, loyalty members. And so 95% of our sales are from those members. So they're giving us signals on how they're shopping with us, right? Whether they're using our app, whether they're coming in store, whether they're using our digital channels, we are able to create more personalized experiences for them and leverage that data to, to do that. We also have our digital strategy, which is focused on, of course, growing our online store, right? Um, and dry, driving that loyalty uh, conversion, but also our omni-channel experiences. So when I talk about that holistic, we also refer to it as omni-channel, not just the channel, but also blending of the physical and digital, and then creating the future. So, but beauty is one of those tough things that you really do have to experience it in the sense of knowing if a color is going to look right in you sure. or if a cream is too thick or, I mean, how, how do you try to blend those? Because right. it's a really, it's an exceedingly complex question that you might have more than other retailers. Yeah, the way I look at it is, you know, our, you know, for, you're right, people do want to touch beauty. They want to know the consistency. They want to know the form factor. They want to see how it is, you know, how it looks on them. You know, you see a lot of people swatching their arms in stores, right, to see how it matches their skin tone. You know, digitally, we can provide a lot of that as well with virtual try-on, with a lot of the product content that we have, you know, how to use ingredients. So what I, what I consider is how do we leverage digital for those in-store experiences? And driving folks to our app, is that you know we have those all contained within it it becomes the shopping companion within the store right you walk into the store you have your app you know your loyalty status you know your points how many points you can redeem for products how much you're gonna earn activate different offers so you talk about touching and feeling but there's a holistic journey in, in that right it's about discovery and it's about the joy of discovery of beauty and I think that digital can complement the end store because also nothing's going to take away from the human connection as well if we can leverage some of those digital pieces to do that research that the guests is coming into the store with, then they had the conversation with the sales associate to say, hey, I saw these products online. I, I, I want to use these ingredients. Can you help me out? And that human connection is what's really important in store as well. Well, I think it's also important to remember that uh, there's not an Ulta in every city. You know what I'm saying? I happen to have one that is less than three miles from my house. So it's not a big deal for me to pop into the store if I want to try something sure. out or whatever. But I think that we've seen technology advance to such great degrees that, you know, those skin tests, for instance, you know, you can really, if, if you do a good job on your website of representing some of those, you of can, I mean, we're not dummies. We know what our skin tone is and we know, or things like, you know, take our beauty quiz and, mm -hmm. and have, you know, that technology power sure. behind that. So I think that creating, um, creating things that make something that at one point in time felt like I have to go to the store to discover this becomes I can have a great discovery journey sure. online and then I but I also have protections in place you know I can return things or whatever so I think that all of that works together and it is really powerful in terms of the, what it puts in the hands of the of the customer I think you brought up a good point in that there's so many products out there right we yeah. have 25,000 products over 600 brands and so digital can help but you brought up quizzes how do you take a quiz to narrow that down so that you can have a more personalized result right how do your search results even become more personalized right so you know as you type in search for mascara you know maybe you want to narrow them down quickly to uh, cruelty free or vegan or things that pertain to you 
we provide that from a digital perspective to our guests to really kind of sift through those 25,000 products and get the ones that you're looking for. Because right. then you're going to evaluate and, and have more confidence in your purchase, whether you do it on the digital channel or in store. Well, and you think about when you talk about omni-channel, it's so interesting how social media powers, you know, we were having a conversation earlier, like I could name without spending any time thinking about it, I could name 20 products and brands that I discovered purely as a result of social media sure. channels, right? And so that is a huge discovery mm -hmm. engine today. We're not we're not watching TV with ads, we're not listening to radio, we're not reading newspapers. Right. So that's a discovery engine. But you can through social channels, you can see, oh, hourglass. That looks like an amazing lip gloss. I'm going to order that. You know what I'm saying? And, and so you have the ability to discover, maybe not on the Ulta site, maybe in social channels. Brands are very um, intelligently working they with are. influencers, you know, to help tell their stories and spread their messages. So I think all of this plays a role because what we all want is to be able to easily discover things, then to be able to try them, then to find things that we fall in love with. And then once I know those things, then, you know, I'm all in on bye, 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 right. bye. <laughs> but, but I think you bring up an interesting point because we, we can't have a one size fits all solution, no. right? So you yeah. have to make it seamless with what, where the guest is at. They might see some, something on social media, Hourglass as an example, and they have to have a find a way of finding that easily yeah. on the site. How do they get to the site, learn the content, understand the product, because then, Either they have the confidence to purchase it online right there, or they're going to take that content and, and interact with one of our associates in the store and have the conversation. And so you, you have to take what, what all the all the inputs from the external, right, that we yeah. get, uh, uh, you know, multiple times a day, and then be able to sift that down digitally and make it effortlessly for the guest once they do that. It becomes a companion. Yeah. Speaking of companions, now are you using technology? to help with discoverability. For instance, you already know I like the Hourglass brand because that's what I came to your site searching for. And you know that I'm interested in lip gloss. Um, but are but I don't know what else exists in this product line. Sure. So are you using AI-powered functionality as part of your composable commerce platform? We're using, we're using our own um, methodology and recommendations engine. And so we have, uh, we acquired a, a company a couple years ago that um, we, we now refer to as the quasi platform. And it is our own based um, uh, recommendations platform that leverages our data, okay. what we know, you know, what we know about the guests, what we know about shopping patterns and behaviors and serves up items for you that will help. So you'll see, you know, recommendations can be recommendations. You might be a product that's um, in similar products, right? But if we know more about you and we know more about your behavior, we actually have a better result that we can serve to you. And it may be, you might not notice it, right? Because it might be just the recommendations in the rail, but they actually are personalized to you. Yeah. And so you'll interact with that, that, that recommendation rail more because what you see is more relevant to yeah. you. Yeah, and it's not creepy because sometimes things can feel creepy. Sure. But this, it feels very intuitive when it, it happens. It feels intuitive and it's more based off of, you know, what, um, you know, what we might know about you, what we also know about the product lines too, yeah. right? And beauty is also about newness. We, we, we want to make sure that we allow an opportunity for you to discover something new too. So there's other ways of discovering product that we have to also you know, leverage those same recommendations to show something that might be something that you uh, have, um, that you show interest in the past that might have newness so that we can show new products too. One of the things that Ulta is known for is a very loyal, intent, fiercely loyal customer base. <laughs> we are the mothers of some of your fiercely mm -hmm. loyal customers. Thank um, you very much. <laughs> so how are you using digital to drive this loyalty? Yeah, I mean, I think with loyalty, and as I mentioned, there's 43 million members, right? And so that's a large loyalty base. Digital helps do that where, you know, our loyalty program is, and we just rebranded re it, it's the rewardiest program there is, and our guests do love it. Rewardiest? Rewardiest. A rewardiest. Yes. <laughs> okay. And our guests do love it, but it also means that you have to be able to be relevant to them. So how do we have offers that are, are um, pertinent to you and that will engage you? Uh, you know, we run... Um, two, three, four X promotions on products, right? And so that also feeds into our loyalty program. Then as you earn, it's simple. As you earn, you can redeem as well. And so our guests, uh, as they shop with us, accumulate these points and then, you know, have the ability to use them on a routine basis if they want to or save for something big. And so I think from a rewards perspective, it's a, it's a great program because it really meets you where you want to be. And I think that's where we continue to get engagement with it. 
One of the things that we, we've talked about today is that the, the buyers, that, the shoppers, the customers are now Gen Z mm -hmm. predominantly, and they are digital natives, they are internet savvy, but they're also socially conscious. They're the most diverse generation sure. in American history, I think globally too. Um, how, are you, how do you think about that and how does it change your perspective in terms of making sure that you are delivering technology that speaks to them and, and fills what they need? I think it's technology and I think it's also getting them to the products, right? So you, you mentioned um, um, Gen Z and uh, I don't know if there was sustain sustainability that you use. Socially conscious, but yeah. Conscious, but, but, but it but is. Yeah. And so how do you give them the ability to filter the products that they want to? We, felt, we have a program called Conscious Beauty, right? So it's all about vegan, cruelty-free, sustainable packaging and all that and that's important to to this demographic so we have to have the ability to use digital to not it's not just it's not just uh what do i say you know badging on a product but it's in the filters and it's subtle but it brings the products to that generation and then you can run campaigns around it and then you can get them to the products quicker again you know you have to a large amount of products that you have to sift through so how do you get them because it's you know as we know in digital time is of the essence of getting folks to their products that's <laughs> great exactly and then going back to what Shelly was asking before about this sort of omni-channel in-store experience, mm -hmm. how are you leveraging technology to make sure that it's also helping them while they're there and they can just swap yeah, their Yeah, our, our app is really important to us for the omni-channel experience because we do see it as a companion in the store. You know, we do have things like virtual try-on, and it's not just makeup. We also have it for nail and for hair and for brows. And so also those lead to then services that we have in store as well. So we leverage, you know, our technology to then promote some of the things from products and services that we have, because you might try a brow shape and then be able to then go to the arch expert, expert at the brow bar and then have that same thing done. But you've already had the ability digitally to see what different styles yeah. look like on you before you actually go and have the service perform. So digitally, that's actually helping the guest uh, play with different looks. Hairstyles, hair colors, very similar. Makeup, very similar as well. Without having the commitment of putting on the makeup or getting that haircut or getting that style, the digital tools can help you. And so we do feel that you know all of those features in our app, and we also have them on, on, on uh, the, the, the web inflections as well, is really helping the guests sift through some of those choices. I think that we are in an age of do-it-yourself consumers. You know what I'm saying? I mean, we go to YouTube to learn how to do sure. something. Um, we watch TikTok videos to learn how to contour or <laughs> whatever. Um, but I think that when I think about an in-store experience, whether it's me or whether it's my 18-year-old mm -hmm. teenagers, um, you know, walking in and going up to somebody and saying, hi, I need some help with my brows, obviously, you know. Yeah. Um, but to, like you said, to be able to use the app companion to privately do my own homework. Exactly. And set the stage for what, this is what I thought. This is what I discovered. Now I'm comfortable enough. I'm ready to go have a, a conversation with somebody as opposed to feeling like I have to walk up to a complete stranger. And of course, you know, our perception is that, you know, they're going to do all kinds of things sure. and try to talk me into stuff that I don't really need. So I, I see that as really helping along the, the path to purchase and mm -hmm. making people really comfortable. And that's a great use of technology. There. Yeah, you're, you're really right. I mean, if you walked into an Ulta Beauty and you asked uh, information about your brows, of course, we'd help you, right? Of but course. to your point, some customers and some guests want to have that information before they come in. They want to have their own sense of confidence. And so that's, I think, what the tools allow you to do because it doesn't take away from the human connection in the store. You just feel more confident with the information that you have coming into the store. Right. We've provided you that and, and you know, omni-channel or blurring of the physical and digital experiences way of getting that information. One of the things we heard on the main stage from executives at Commerce Tools is this, this is a company that wants your feedback. They want to know what they're doing right, what, what, they, when, what they need help on. How, what are some of the things that you can do with this composable commerce platform sure. that you couldn't do before? And is there anything you hope that Commerce Tools is, is looking ahead for because of what you want to do next at Ulta Beauty? Yeah, I think it's a great question. You know, we, we have transitioned um, from our old uh, platform to our new platform, including Commerce Tools, but that also uh, allowed us to introduce new uh, content management systems, a new promotions engine, uh, and then fully integrate with our order management system. So it allows us to bring in the right solutions and partners for the 
for the experiences that we need, right? When I talk about a CMS, before if, uh, or a content management system, before if we wanted to make a change for a site experience or a page experience, we had to work with our technology teams. And of course they'd work with us, but they have other things to work on that can actually future-proof us, right? So now we have the power in the business's hands to make those changes for the site, and it's now solely within our area of responsibility to change the look and feel of the site. And it's been a game changer for us to go onto this type of architecture, to leverage commerce tools, to leverage these other uh, providers that allow us to bring them together so that you know we, we, can, can, we can continue to grow our technology stack but have a better experience for the guests. Composable commerce, that's it, right? It's I great. Mean, that's the whole value prop of composable commerce. Take the pieces Take I the need. the pieces you need. And speed to deployment, execution, all that sort of thing. That's and and so the, to answer your question, if Commerce to Tools is listening, it's how do we make sure that those connectors are efficient and effective, right? And as we continue, continue to grow, let's work together on our roadmaps to make sure that we can continue to grow our experiences. I hope they're listening. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff, a pleasure having you on. Thank you so much. I'm Rebecca Knight for Shelley Kramer. Stay tuned for more of theCUBE's coverage of Commerce Tools Elevate. You're watching theCUBE, the, the leader in enterprise tech news.